is the Dart Zone Pro Mark IV tournament ready out of the box? The Pro line continues on for Dart Zone, and this time, rather than a Mark 1.3 iteration for the next Springer, they've decided to change the form of the blaster entirely and release the Mark IV, a much larger option, which raised some initial questions for me, but I've been waiting to get to use one firsthand to see if the changes were a net positive or negative. Performance first, I tested both with the FPS barrel and with the FPS barrel removed and scar barrel in its place. Something you'll notice across both sets of numbers here is that there are some pretty significant spread numbers. That inconsistency is unfortunately a theme for this blaster. The FPS seems to be a bit more consistent with the included Bamboo 2X darts than others in most cases. I know the blaster is designed with their Bamboo darts in mind, but being able to reliably use other darts too is important. Another thing you probably noticed as we switch between both sets of numbers here is that there isn't really a substantial increase in FPS between with the FPS barrel and without. Again, with the best results being with the included Bamboo 2X darts. Bear in mind here that if you want to use those darts, it's $45 for 200 of them. So unless you have the cash to drop on those darts specifically for this blaster, you may be in a subpar spot with it. But let's move on to groupings because numbers are only part of the equation. And we can start out hopeful when we look at groupings here. Things look pretty good with the scar barrel at 40 feet. As you'd expect with a scar barreled Springer, everything looks pretty consistent. Now, when we put the FPS barrel on, we start to see some spread occurring with the AF pros and worker darts, but nothing horrific, just means some shots here and there will be off target at closer range. The scar barrel results 75 feet start to look a little less promising with the AF pro and Bamboo 2X darts starting to creep out a bit, but I think I'd still call them just within the acceptable range. But with the FPS barrel at 75 feet, it's just abysmal. There's no other way to put it easily the worst groupings we have ever had in testing for this series so far. This makes the FPS barrel feel functionally pointless if you're actually going to use the blaster in a game. To not be able to attach the included scar barrel on the end of the FPS barrel out of the box is something I simply don't understand. Though even if it was possible, the blaster is so incredibly long with the FPS barrel on that trying to maneuver behind cover with it is an ordeal. The blaster is just long in general and the Prime is no exception. While the benefits of the longer Prime is that it's an easier Prime, it somehow doesn't feel the most comfortable during repeated use. To be clear, I have a long wingspan, so the length shouldn't be an issue, but it just feels uncomfortable in use. The same goes for the grip. The area between my thumb and index finger was sore after testing. First time that's happened during testing with a blaster in this series. If the blaster felt reliable and consistent in use, some of these things could be overlooked but the blaster felt inconsistent in use. Whether some darts were getting turbulence from too much pressure or some weren't getting enough, every shot was a question as to whether the dart was gonna go straight, veer off course, spiral, or fishtail. That's not something you wanna have to worry about in a tournament setting. On that note of reliability though, I will say that I only encountered one jam during my testing, with both the included mags and talon mags. And while this is a plus for my personal experience with it, I've heard from multiple others with the blaster that it has issues jamming, so keep that in mind. It may be something you encounter. This blaster isn't 100% bad though. The positives are things like it having good build quality, it feels solid, and the plastic feels durable. The prime being easier due to the length can be a positive for accessibility if you aren't able to prime heavier spring-powered blasters. The fact it comes with a scar barrel that can easily be stored in the stock is great. If you're using the right darts, playing in games with a 200 FPS cap, don't mind the length, and have one that doesn't jam, then it could be serviceable. But is serviceable what you should be looking for in a tournament blaster? I definitely don't think so, especially at a higher cost than many other blasters. As much as I want to see Dart Zone produce great blasters in the Pro line that I can fall in love with, this one feels like it needed more time and development to polish the consistency and reliability issues a little bit more before release. I have to say that the Dart Zone Pro Mark IV is not tournament ready out of the box.